Surface Well Testing This module delves into surface well testing, focusing on key operational concepts and equipment. It covers drawdown and build-up phases, helping learners understand pressure behavior and flow dynamics during a well test. The module also introduces the main surface well testing equipment, explaining their functions and roles in acquiring accurate data. Additionally, it distinguishes between flexible and rigid piping systems, highlighting their applications, benefits, and limitations in different testing setups. By the end of this module, participants will have a solid grasp of surface well testing operations and equipment configurations. When performing well tests, several key factors must be addressed to ensure accurate results and safety. These include requirements of dynamic conditions. Understanding the dynamic conditions of the well is essential to properly plan and execute the test, ensuring that the well behaves as expected under different pressures and flow rates. Type and layout of surface testing equipment. Choosing the right surface testing equipment and arranging it correctly is crucial for efficient data collection and maintaining system integrity during the test. Equipment needed to collect samples at the surface. It's important to have the proper tools for collecting samples of produced fluids, as these samples will provide vital information about the well's productivity and reservoir characteristics. Safety requirements. Safety protocols must be strictly followed to protect personnel and equipment. This includes ensuring proper handling of hazardous materials, controlling well pressure, and having emergency response procedures in place. The creation of a pressure disturbance in a well depends on whether the reservoir is producing or shut in. If the well has been shut in for a long time, is to flow the reservoir, this is called drawdown. This process lowers the pressure in the reservoir as fluids are produced, creating a pressure disturbance. If the well has been flowing for a long time, is to shut in the well, this is called buildup. This allows the pressure in the reservoir to recover and increase as fluids are no longer being produced, creating a different type of pressure disturbance. Both drawdown and buildup are essential processes in well testing, as they help evaluate reservoir properties and well performance. Surface Well Testing Equipment Surface testing equipment must safely and reliably perform a wide range of functions. Quickly control pressure and flow rates at the surface and shut in the well. Separate the effluent into three separate fluids, oil, gas and water. Accurately meter the fluids, collect and separate solids as applicable. Collect surface samples. And finally dispose of the resulting fluids in an environmentally safe manner. A standard set of surface well testing equipment includes a flow head, a safety valve, a sand filter, a choke manifold, an emergency shutdown system ESD, a heat exchanger, a separator, one or two gauge tanks or surge tanks, a transfer pump, an oil manifold and a gas manifold, and finally one or two burners with burners booms for offshore operation. The flow head controls the well pressure. The choke manifold controls the flow and the pressure. The heater or steam exchanger is used to raise the effluent temperature to fight hydrates in the case of a gas well, break emulsion or reduce foam and viscosity in the case of an oil well, and improve burning efficiency. The separator is used to separate, meter and sample the three phases of the effluent. The surge tank or gauge tank is used to store oil, to calibrate the separator liquid meters, to measure the shrinkage and low liquid flow rate. The transfer pump is used to empty the tank and to ensure proper atomization pressure for clean burning at the burner head. The oil is disposed of through the burner located at the extremity of the booms to reduce heat radiations towards the rig. The gas is burned separately through a gas flare located on the burner booms. The various elements of the surface well testing chain are interconnected with piping, generally flexible between flow head and choke manifold, and rigid elsewhere. Flexible Piping 1. High-pressure flexible hose ended with Wico Union or Greylock connections, used between flow head and choke manifold, such as Coflexip, are designed to handle high-pressure conditions. 2. Low-pressure flexible rubber hoses. These hoses, usually ending with Wico Union connections, are primarily used for air or water lines. They are designed to handle lower pressures and offer flexibility for various surface applications. High-pressure flexible hose, Coflexip, is used between flow head and choke manifold,
To allow up and down movement of the DST string during the DST tools operations, keeping the flow line connected to the burner via the choke manifold. Long lengths of flexible hoses, typically ranging from 40 to 60 feet, are available. These longer lengths reduce the number of seals required, thereby minimizing the risks of rupture or leaks. However, coflexip hoses are heavy and require the use of a crane for safe rig up, ensuring proper handling during installation. To maintain the minimum bending radius, MBR, of the hose, it may be necessary to use a couple of elbows at both ends of the coflexip hose. This helps prevent damage to the hose while ensuring smooth operation and flexibility during use. Rigid Piping Rigid piping with Wico Union or Greylock connections for high-pressure lines. Rigid piping is commonly used for high-pressure lines and is typically equipped with Wico Union or Greylock connections to ensure secure, leak-proof joints. Straight piping The straight sections of rigid piping are usually available in lengths of 1 meter, 3 meters, or 5 meters, depending on the needs of the installation. These pipes provide a stable and durable flow path for high-pressure fluids. Elbows, often available in 90-degree angles, are used to change the direction of the piping, allowing for flexible routing in confined spaces or areas requiring specific alignment. These fittings are essential in maintaining the integrity and efficiency of the piping system in high-pressure applications. Thanks so much for watching. That wraps up today's presentation. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps us keep creating more content like this. See you in the next video.